Aladdin. One night, in the Arabian desert, the evil sorcerer Jafar put two halves of an enchanted scarab together. It flew out of his hands and into the sand, where a giant tiger head appeared. After all my years of searching, the Cave of Wonders, Jafar cried in awe. He was so close to finding the magic lamp. Suddenly, the tiger head began to speak. It told Jafar that only a person of great worth could enter the cave and retrieve the lamp. I must find this one, Jafar said. This diamond in the rough. The next morning, in the marketplace of Agrabah, a boy named Aladdin and his pet monkey Abu were fleeing from palace guards. They had stolen a loaf of bread. Stop, street rat, called the guards, as Aladdin glided over rooftops and through alleyways to escape them. Gotta eat to live, gotta steal to eat, Aladdin called back as he made his way out of sight. The guards eventually lost Aladdin and Abu. The two friends couldn't wait to eat. But when Aladdin saw two hungry children, he gave the bread to them and returned to his rooftop home with an empty belly. Aladdin sighed as he gazed at the beautiful Agrabah Palace. Someday, Abu, things are going to change. We'll be rich, live in a palace, and never have any problems at all. Within the palace walls, Princess Jasmine had just rejected another unwelcome suitor. Her father, the Sultan, was not pleased. Dearest, he began, the law says you must marry a prince by my next birthday, Jasmine finished for him. I hate being forced into this. If I do marry, I want it to be for love. With her birthday only three days away, Jasmine decided to flee the palace, disguised as a peasant girl, to live life as she pleased. Jafar, the sultan's trusted advisor, said he could change Jasmine's mind about getting married. But, Jafar said, eyeing the sultan's ring, it would require the use of the mystic blue diamond. Jafar hypnotized the sultan with his snake-like staff and stole the ring. He took the diamond to his secret chamber to activate the sands of time. Reveal to me the one who can enter the cave, he commanded. The sands showed Aladdin. Jafar ordered his guards to bring Aladdin to the palace at once. Meanwhile, Jasmine was enjoying her newfound freedom in the marketplace. When she saw a hungry little boy, she plucked a piece of fruit from a nearby fruit stand and gave it to him. Used to life in the palace, she didn't know she needed to pay for it. No one steals from my cart. Thief! shouted the vendor, taking out his sword. Luckily, Aladdin intervened before anyone got hurt. Taking Jasmine's hand, Aladdin led her through the marketplace and away from the angry vendor. Back at Aladdin's rooftop home, they talked about how they both felt trapped in their worlds. They looked into each other's eyes, and Aladdin leaned in to kiss her. Here you are, street rat! shouted a guard. Unhand him by order of the princess, Jasmine yelled, pulling off her hood. The princess, gasped Aladdin, surprised by who she was. I would, princess, except my orders come from Jafar, the guard responded as he hauled Aladdin away. Fortunately, Abu snuck into the dungeon and freed Aladdin from his chains. Then, the little monkey batted his eyelashes at Aladdin, clearly imitating the princess. I'll never see her again. I'm a street rat, remember? She's got to marry a prince. I'm a fool, Aladdin said. You're only a fool if you give up, boy, said an old man emerging from the darkness. There is a cave, he explained, filled with treasures beyond your wildest dreams. Treasure enough to impress even your princess. So they struck a deal. Aladdin would retrieve the magic lamp from the cave in exchange for a reward. They escaped from the dungeon through a hidden exit. The old man brought Aladdin and Abu to the entrance to the Cave of Wonders. The tiger head roared open, and a staircase made of sand appeared inside its jaws. Who disturbs my slumber? The tiger head thundered. It is I, Aladdin, Aladdin said faintly. 
Proceed, roared the tiger. Touch nothing but the lamp. Inside the cave, Aladdin and Abu arrived in a glittering chamber built to the brim with treasure. Mounds of coins, beautifully adorned chests, and countless jewels towered over their heads. Just a handful of this stuff would make me richer than the sultan, said Aladdin. Then, a magic carpet tugged on Abu's tail, startling the little monkey. A magic carpet, Aladdin exclaimed. Maybe you can help us. See, we're trying to find this lamp. They followed the magic carpet to an enormous cavern. In the center was a huge altar of rocks surrounded by water, and the lamp was at the top of it. Aladdin climbed a bridge over the water. When he finally reached the top of the altar, he wondered what the old man wanted with a dusty lamp. Below, Abu had his eye on a giant red ruby. The magic carpet tried to stop him, but the monkey broke free and snatched the ruby. He had to have it. Suddenly, the room began to rumble, and a voice echoed in the cavern. You have touched the forbidden treasure. Now you will never again see the light of day. Just then, the bridge turned into a slick ramp, sending Aladdin skidding toward hot lava. The magic carpet caught him and headed toward the entrance to save Abu. Together, Aladdin, Abu, and the magic carpet zigzagged through the cave dodging pillars of bursting lava, falling rocks, and crumbling walls. Just as they reached the entrance, a rock fell on the magic carpet, trapping it. Aladdin grabbed onto a ledge to keep from falling back into the cave. Give me your hand, Aladdin cried out to the old man. First, give me the lamp, the old man shouted. Aladdin gave him the lamp, but the old man laughed as he took off his disguise. It was really Jafar. He let Aladdin and Abu fall back into the depths of the cave. Luckily, the magic carpet freed itself and caught Aladdin and Abu before they hit the ground. Above, the tiger head gave a final roar and sank back into the sand. We're trapped, Aladdin said angrily. But Abu grinned at Aladdin and pulled out the magic lamp. Why, you hairy little thief, Aladdin said, patting Abu. Hey, I think there's something written here. Aladdin rubbed the side of the lamp. The lamp began to rattle in Aladdin's hands, shooting out a stream of pink and purple smoke. Then, poof, a genie emerged. Here for your wish fulfillment, said the genie. So what'll it be, master? Aladdin didn't want to use any wishes yet, so he tried to trick the genie into helping them escape. He probably can't even get us out of this cave, he said under his breath. Excuse me? The genie gasped. Are you looking at me? Did you rub my lamp? Instantly, they were out of the cave and at a desert oasis. Jasmine, Aladdin made his first wish. I wish for you to make me a prince. In a flash, Aladdin was riding into Agrabah in style. Sword twirlers, acrobats, and a menagerie of animals escorted him down the city streets. Make way for Prince Ali, the parade sang on its way to the palace. Now a prince, Aladdin asked the sultan for Jasmine's hand in marriage. I will win your daughter, he added. Jasmine burst into the room. How dare you, she cried. I am not a prize to be won. That evening, Aladdin flew to Jasmine's balcony on the magic carpet. He told her that she was not just a prize. You should be free to make your own choice, he said. Then Jasmine saw the magic carpet. Is it safe? she asked. Do you trust me? he replied, reaching out his hand to her. Without hesitation, Jasmine took his hand, and up they zoomed into the sky, flying through clouds high above Agrabah, into a whole new world. Meanwhile, Jafar was thinking up an evil plan to get rid of Aladdin. When Aladdin left Jasmine that night, Jafar was waiting for him, with guards. I'm afraid you've worn out your welcome, Jafar said. His guards tossed Aladdin into the sea with a weight tied to his ankles.
but Aladdin was clever and had hidden the lamp under his turban. He wished for the genie to rescue him. Aladdin rushed back to the palace. He needed to show Jasmine and the Sultan who Jafar really was. But when he arrived at the palace to expose the evil sorcerer, Jafar's parrot, Iago, stole the lamp and gave it to Jafar. Jafar rubbed the lamp, summoning the genie. I wish to rule as Sultan, Jafar cried, making his first wish as the genie's new master. Jafar then made his second wish, to become the most powerful sorcerer in the world. He quickly went to work, trapping Jasmine inside a giant hourglass, changing the sultan into a puppet and turning Abu into a toy. Aladdin, seeing the lamp, rushed toward it. Jafar trapped him behind a sharp wall of swords, but the street rat was not ready to back down. Aladdin had an idea. Face it, Jafar, you're still just second best, he said, hinting at the genie's great power. Jafar made his final wish. I wish to be an all-powerful genie, he said and another magic lamp appeared. You want to be a genie? You got it, Aladdin said, holding up Jafar's lamp. Jafar was sucked into the lamp, imprisoned forever. The sultan was so impressed with Aladdin's bravery that he changed the law so Jasmine could choose her husband. Jasmine, of course, chose to marry Aladdin. But Aladdin still had one wish left. Genie, he said. I wish for your freedom. The genie's shackles fell to the ground. I'm free, the genie said, as he hugged Aladdin and thanked him. After a tearful goodbye, the genie flew into the sky. Aladdin knew they would always be friends. Then, turning to Jasmine, Aladdin gently took her hand. Together, they hopped on the magic carpet and soared into the clouds.